Good morning and welcome. My name is Nathan Sorensen. I am the Strategic Information Technology Procurement Officer for the Midwestern Higher Education Compact. Thank you for joining us today for a webinar on Max contract with Corel and featuring Corel's Paint Shop Pro and Video Studio Pro. Before turning the controls over to our guest presenters from Corel, I'd like to briefly introduce the Midwestern Higher Education Compact to you and how we arrived at this contract with Corel, share some informational resources available to you regarding the contract. To help you understand our contracting authority and why the Midwestern Higher Education Compact is involved with these technology contracts, it's best to have a better understanding about our organization. We are an interstate compact charged with advancing Midwestern higher education through interstate cooperation and resource sharing. The Midwestern Higher Education Compact is one of four regional compacts in the United States and each have their own niche for addressing issues and advocating for higher education. Often referred to as MEC, our niche was rooted in cost savings programs created by and supported by stakeholders from the 12 Midwestern states. The compact is governed by a 60-member board called the Commission, made up of governor, designees, legislative, and higher education leaders, essentially trying to help students get into and matriculate through college as well as a source and policy, where we attempt to help decision makers, governors, legislators, and higher education leaders in our member states make more informed decisions. MEC has agreements in place to extend our technology's cost savings programs to the Southern Regional Education Board, SREB, and to the Western Interstate Commission for Higher Education, WICHE. Currently, we have no agreement with the New England Board of Higher Education, and as the map shows, there are three states not covered by any of the compacts, New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania. What a compact is, is really a contract amongst the states. This legislation that was passed in each state makes us an instrumentality of state government in the 12 Midwestern states. Similarly, the other compacts have been statutorily created. What makes the compact unique to higher education is its broad contracting authority created in each of its member states. The compact is not a group purchasing organization. The compact is a means for stakeholders in the 12 member states to collaborate on identifying regional issues and committing resources to leverage the solution through the compact statutory authority. We are very selective in the types of contracts that we pursue. We try to identify those areas that we can bring value in and as a result, will be something that an individual institution may not be able to replicate on its own. But because we are working together across state lines, regionally and now nationally, we can bring value that would not have otherwise been there. During an annual meeting of Midwestern higher education CIOs, technical experts, and IT procurement professionals in February of 2013, Many individuals express the need to look for creative software, alternatives, and licensing options to meet the needs of faculty, students, and staff. A small work group of regional representatives was formed, and in July 2013, we announced a request for proposals for creative software for design, print, media, and web. The RFP Selection Committee evaluated four responses and chose two finalists for oral presentations and product demonstrations. Ultimately, 
the committee's competitively sourced RFP resulted in the selection of Corel in December of 2013 as the solution for creative software. While all of the contracts are negotiated on behalf of higher education, when the opportunity presents itself, the compact negotiates to extend the contracts to K-12, cities, state, and local governments, which may include different price schedules. Our MECTEC website features a couple of easy ways you may access our contracts. When accessing the site, mechtech.org, use the toolbar at the top to select a category such as computer hardware, software, or printers. Or you may go directly to the Contracts section by clicking the Contracts link in the upper right-hand corner. It's also important to note that we insert recent news about contracts, RFPs, as well as upcoming regional and national events. Please also visit the section on getting the most value from MEC contracts to receive some valuable tips on purchasing products and services using this contract vehicle. For details regarding the Corel contract, select Software from the top toolbar, and then from the drop-down menu at the left, or click on the Corel logo to go to the Corel contract page. Once on the Corel page, you will be able to find contract highlights, the contract terms, and specific Corel contact information. Please note on the, the right-hand side under contract eligibility, you will find clickable links for each of the eligible parties. By clicking one of these links, visitors will arrive at the Corel website specifically tailored for MEC and its sister compacts, SR, EB, and WICHE. The Corel website has additional contact information for purchasing Corel products, including all of their products, an outline on their Corel Education License Program, price lists, frequently asked questions, and more. Clicking on the Contracts link in the upper right-hand corner, you will find the ability to download contracts and their amendments and or addendums, plus the specific links to state statutes for the MEC region are visible on the right-hand side of the page. Also, please don't hesitate to contact our staff if you have any questions. You will see my contact information as well as our legal counsel should you have any direct questions for Rob. So I'm excited to uh, uh, announce today's special presenter is Greg Wood, Senior Product Manager in Digital Media with Corel. But before we uh, uh, get an introduction, uh, for Greg, I'd like to turn over the floor to Brian Hanlon, North American Licensing Manager from Corel Corporation. Uh, Brian, can you please introduce yourself, uh, Corel, and your colleague Greg? Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Uh, thanks very much, Nathan. Um, as Nathan mentioned, I'm the uh, North American Licensing Manager for Corel. Um, so primarily, I've been involved with Nathan in, in, uh, in regards to this specific MEC contract um, and uh, deal with mainly our education, government, and corporate customers in North America. So with, uh, with that being said, I just wanted to uh, take a few minutes and uh, just provide a bit of background uh, on Corel uh, just to provide um, you know, some insight. I'm sure many of you uh, might have uh, been familiar with Corel, but might not be aware of what Corel is today. So we've undergone a lot of changes over the course of the past 10 years and thought it would be useful to, uh, to show that. Um, 
Once again, just wanted to thank Nathan and, uh, and Mech for giving us this opportunity to, uh, to showcase our products in this webinar series. Um, but let's just get to where Corel is today. A lot of you might uh, think of Corel um, and think of Corel Draw, uh, WordPerfect, and that would be your, uh, you know, your view of what Corel is. But as I mentioned, uh, a lot's changed. We have a very broad product portfolio now with 150 million users in over 150 countries. Uh, we're financially strong and profitable, and we will continue to acquire companies uh, as we have done over the course of the past 10 years. So as I mentioned, one of the things that's changed quite a bit is, um, I think we're having a bit of lag here, but I'll try to, uh, try to provide some insight on what Corel is now. So our product snapshot has, has changed uh, quite a bit. Um, as I mentioned, we've acquired many companies over the course of the past 10 years. I mentioned a few of these, WinZip, uh, Roxio, Sonic, InterVideo, Jask, ULead, and Pinnacle. Um, so the portfolio has changed quite a bit. It's a very broad-based portfolio. I think that's one of the reasons why um, we were chosen as uh, the sole source provider for this contract with MEC. Uh, one thing I do want to mention, our um, uh, portfolio has uh, uh, applications that run on Windows, Windows and Mac, uh, even Windows, Mac, and Linux. Um, but I do want to mention we understand that uh, specifically within education, the question of how Corel supports Mac has been asked. Uh, I've been on uh, you know, more than a few uh, uh, calls where this has come up, so I did want to address that uh, right now. Obviously, you can run any of our products on a virtualized desktop like uh, Parallels, um, but some schools want a better solution than that. With that said, we're finalizing testing many of our products uh, to provide them in a cloud environment uh, with partners such as Amazon, Cisco, Google. So ultimately, uh, this, we hope in the next few months, will make the platform less and less important and uh, make the Corel option much more feasible for many of you. Uh, if anybody has any questions regarding that or would like to discuss that offline, hopefully my, uh, my contact information will come up, uh, but you can please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, so with that, Nathan, would you mind uh, taking a suit reassuming control of the presentation? So a bit of background on who, uh, who is Corel in education. Uh, I did just want to mention we have educational customers in every state and province in North America, and I, I, I really think uh, you know, that's for a couple of main reasons, and ultimately that's the message I want to leave you with. Um, and I think it's part of the reason, again, why, why we were chosen by MEC. We have been very aggressive on pricing. Um, if you take a look on the Corel slash MEC uh, price list, you'll find that uh, the pricing has been reduced pretty dramatically uh, to make this a very attractive option for, uh, for schools and boards. Um, the other thing I do want to mention is Corel has tried to be very flexible. Our pro programs are very flexible. Um, we try not to limit, and one of the things that we definitely don't do is we don't lock you into multi-year commitments. So, Part of the mantra that we have is you buy what you need when you need it. There are no long-term commitments, um, and we still uh, provide perpetual licensing, which I feel is uh, something that comes up over and over. It's what many of our educational customers continue to ask about. You can go to the next slide, Nathan. So I, I think I've touched on many of the reasons why you, know, you should consider Corel. I don't want to belabor the point, but I did want to get that across. Um, you know, we hear time and time again that many of the important things are uh, price points, flexibility, um, and having a broad-based product portfolio where you know, we are an alternative to, uh, to many other vendors out there. Um, along with that, we have world-class partners that are supporting this contract in Dell, SHI, JourneyEd, and CDW. Um, and those resellers specifically have been chosen to support this agreement. Um, the one other thing I would mention is that our uh, 
save as and publish to file format capability is second to none in the industry. So we understand that there are many standards out there um, and we aim to support all of them. With that said, uh, hopefully I, I leave you with those key messages. Those are the things I, I really want you to take away, but I'll pass it to, uh, to Greg at this point and he can take over and show us some of PaintShop Pro and Video Studio. Thank you very much, Brian. So thanks everyone for taking the time today and thanks to everyone here at MEC and uh, on the Corral team for having me. It's a real pleasure to come and talk to um, uh, you all about Corel's photo and video products. And with that, Nathan, if we can look, go to the next slide, I'll tell you a little bit more about uh, photo and video software from Corel. Uh, if you, uh, to, to Brian's point, over the past few years, Corel has really broadened our portfolio and added a wide variety of digital media software. So when I say digital media, I mean um, photo for sure. I mean video. We also have motion graphics tools. We have a 3D animation package called Motion Studio 3D. And I think what's most important about having this broad for portfolio today is that we, are, uh, we have the ability in under one roof to offer a very compelling uh, set of tools for students today. And the, I think the salient point for me when I think about uh, photo and video in education is that uh, when I look around the office today and I look at what's happening on the web, there is a, a language that students need to graduate uh, school from today, and that language is digital media. If you look at the way that people communicate, you know, when the f web first started out however many years ago, uh, and even up to as recent as five years ago, we were perfectly happy to put bullets on a, on a web page and promote our wares that way. But today, it, whether it's social media or things like Pinterest or simply a web page, everyone wants to illustrate and communicate their message using video or photo. So it all is supplementary to whatever facts you're using to support, whether it's your business or you're doing uh, scientific research, or uh, you have a small business of your own, you need to have a fluency in digital media if you're going to be successful in today's uh, economy. So it's very important that our students be able to graduate with a fluency in this. And I'm, I'm sure I'm not telling anything anyone, uh, anyone new here. And uh, so we pride ourselves in addressing this opportunity in a way that no one else can. Uh, we have a set of tools that are extremely high quality. We uh, can generate professional quality output in our entire portfolio, yet our differentiating point is that we are not the professional standard. That means we need to provide tools that are going to be easier to get into, they're going to provide a better value, and that we are going to uh, need to work harder to make sure that our products are accessible and easy to use. And that's exactly what we do across the portfolio. So we cover a wide variety of use cases with our software. Uh, the first, you know, photo editing and design is the first one, and that's the first thing I'm going to talk to you about with our product called PaintShop Pro. Uh, this is the world's second uh, most popular photo editing software, uh, extremely capable, whether you're working with photos, whether you're doing design for the web, maybe you're designing a Facebook cover image or trying to brand, uh, do some branding for your business. Uh, PaintShop Pro has got a very versatile and uh, broad feature set. Uh, we also, I'm also going to tell you about another product today that's in our for photo portfolio called Aftershot Pro. This is a raw photography package. Um, really exciting product, uh, fastest raw processing in the industry. Uh, I'm happy to tell you about that as well. And we also have a very complete video offering as well. And again, video traditionally is something that's been a bit challenging because you need to have a grasp of time, you need to understand, you need to understand file formats and, and video cards and all kinds of different aspects of technology and uh, we make it really easy and complete in Video Studio. And all of this is backed by free and comprehensive learning tools. Let me reiterate this. This isn't something that you need to pay for. This is something when you buy a Corel product, you can log into a learning center, um, whether it's the learning center within PaintShop Pro which walks you through step by step how to do common photo tasks, or whether it's our discovery center which you can find in both PaintShop Pro and Video Studio Pro which includes training videos, free training videos about how to complete the tasks you want to do with our software. These are things that are all free. And in fact, if you go to learn.corel.com today, you can, you can see these even before you try the software, which is pretty exciting. 
So we're ready to move to the next slide. Nathan will tell you a little bit about our first product today, and that's Paint Shop Pro. So if your, your school is like many others, you have photography as part of your curriculum. Um, it's amazing to see how digital media capabilities have grown in recent years. I have a wonderful HD camera with me at all times, and that's my phone. It can take HDR. I can take high megapixel photos at very good resolution. I can even do some rudimentary editing on that phone, and it's getting better all the time. But the reality is if you want to teach uh, your students how to really work with photo editing, you still need to do that on the desktop, and you still need a comprehensive set of tools to do that that cover the uh, gamut of photo editing capabilities, and that's exactly what PaintShop Pro can do. Once you start trying PaintShop Pro, I think you'll be very impressed about its versatility and how wide that product is. So for example, we think of it uh, in three ways. Both our product, PaintShop Pro and Video Studio Pro, have this one, two, three approach to, to uh, photo and video editing. That is, there's one step that helps you get in with your photos, a second step that makes you uh, make quick adjustments, and then maybe you get it to the final step, getting it out and sharing it in, uh, in that last step. And here in PaintShop Pro, we articulate that in terms of a manage, adjust, and edit mode. So you can see at the top of the screen. I'm going to show that to you in a second. The, uh, this manage, adjust, and edit metaphor allows us to address all the key elements of a photography workflow. So for example, when you're teaching photography, obviously you're going to teach students about composition while you're using the camera. You're going to go out and teach about exposure. You're going to teach about how to uh, uh, maybe different lenses uh, uh, and, uh, and, and how to get the shot in the field right the first time. That's, obviously, that's what we all want to do first. But after that, PaintShop Pro can do everything you want to do. In our manage mode, you can go in and import your photos, create photo libraries, tag and rate them, show students how to organize a, a library so they can actually get at their photos and be productive. Our Adjust tab allows you to quickly go in and make quick adjustments, whether that's straightening or cropping, all the very common tasks that you might do with your photos. And of course, the Edit mode is where PaintShop Pro really comes into its own. Um, because this is where you can go in and lay out web graphics and do pixel editing and use brushes and painting and um, make all kinds of layouts and, uh, and other tasks. And again, that's where the real power of PaintShop Pro comes in. Other capabilities here, again, applying filters, making, fo making photo composites. We have a very powerful HDR or high dynamic range photography module here. And again, it's all backed by a comprehensive set of learning tools. I'm going to talk more about these uh, PaintShop Pro in one second. Let's go to the next slide. So if you're familiar with photography today, you'll know that there is a, uh, an increasing number of photos out there when we, take, we go on a photo shoot. It used to be that we might take uh, a dozen photos when we were using film cameras on early uh, DS, uh, sorry, digital cameras. We started taking hundreds of photos at a time, and now we might go out and take thousands of photos at a time. And, uh, and very large files indeed because the megapixel count on cameras are so high today. If you're serious about photography though, you might be taking photos in RAW format. I'm not sure who's familiar with RAW here, but let me give you a quick, quick introduction. Traditionally, most cameras, and I can tell you, I have, a, I have an older Nikon DSLR, they would shoot JPEGs. And we're all familiar with JPEGs. It's well supported across all kinds of different platforms. And they will automatically um, your camera will take that image from its sensor and it will articulate that with you know, a, a pre-established white balance. It will uh, do some calculations and basically give you a JPEG output to give you the, uh, the shot that the camera thinks is best. However, when you take that photo, the camera actually captures way more information than you capture in a JPEG. And RAW is, and we, we often express it as capital R-A-W, but really you don't need to. Really raw just means raw straight from the camera. So a raw format is really using, unlike JPEG, it's, take, it's not a subset of the information available to the camera. It's all of the information the camera has about uh, uh, an image. And if you work with raw, you're working with a lot more information, and therefore your file sizes are much larger, but you're also going to get a lot more control. 
So typically at school, this is really going to be a more advanced photography workflow. And I can tell you, it's not just school either, right? If we're an enthusiast photographer, shooting in RAW is something of a higher order skill. But if you're serious about RAW, there's really no reason not to shoot RAW because you can get much better results. We've got a tool here at Corel called Aftershot Pro, and it is the world's fastest RAW processing software. And the reason why that's exciting is because when you're working with RAW formats, again, you might be, if you're working with JPEG, you might have a JPEG file off a 10 megapixel camera. You might get a 2, megapixel uh, two megabyte file, uh, JPEG file off of it uh, when you go into editing mode. Working with RAW, you might have an 8 megabyte file and a lot more information to deal with. So you need to have a pretty serious computer to work with that. Or you need pretty serious software, and that's what we do here. So uh, Aftershock Pro is pretty great because it does all this raw processing very fast. and gives you very good results very easily, but it also does non-destructive editing. So that means whereas if I worked with PaintShop Pro or Photoshop, you know, I might go in and make an edit, and then I'm going to save it, and that changes that source file forever. So unless you want to have that uh, file change forever, you've got to make a copy of it and then edit the copy, right? No need to do that here in Aftershock Pro. It basically creates a sidecar file that remembers, a project file that remembers what the original setting was and then allows you to go and edit that. So pretty powerful tool if you're, if you're doing advanced photography. Uh, in addition to that, this is a product that's very well geared to photo management. So again, if, if you're taking a dozen photos, we've got a lot of tools in PageShop Pro that are going to meet your needs, hundreds of photos even. But if you're shooting thousands of photos, especially large photos, again, this is where something like uh, Aftershots can be very handy because you can tag and, and put star ratings on it and make special catalogs of those, fo those photos all in a non-destructive way very easily. And uh, the other th cool thing about this, PaintShop Pro is a, a Windows product today. Uh, Aftershot Pro is available on Windows, Mac, and Linux. So if you've got some gearheads running Linux at your school, a really amazing product to evaluate. Let's go to the next slide. And the next slide is where things get really interesting and where I'm, I get really excited about this. Videos, video is, I think, the language of the 21st century. If you want to get a story out, you're doing it in video today. And I'm sure that your students are uh, very aware of this. They've probably got their favorite YouTubers. They've probably watched videos on how to do things. Um, they might be taking online courses through your school or another school. All of these things are made possible by video editing software. And that's where Corel comes in. Corel has a pedigree in creative software, as, as you know, and we've been able to bring all that creativity into the video uh, realm with Video Studio Pro. It really is a complete video production workhorse. It does everything. It brings video in from a wide variety of cameras. You can edit them in our edit step in lots of really interesting ways, and then you can output them to basically any format you want. You, if you want to go to disk, which remains very popular for a lot of our users, we support uh, DVD, CD, Blu-ray. If you want to go to uh, iPods or Android devices, we go to all those devices. We save an MPEG-4. We save an AVC. Uh, we go out to uh, uh, we even go to HTML5. So, for example, if you've got people who are doing web design courses today, you won't find this anywhere else. We can actually make a video web page here with embedded links and, uh, and then integrate that into your project, maybe if you're using Greenweaver or what have you. So that's not, that's not available anywhere else. And we do this in one complete package. I think the most important thing, though, you know, forget for a minute that we do some really creative and innovative things in video editing. The really cool thing here is that Video Studio makes it really easy to edit video. Again, um, I, I have this idea from many years ago that you need to be able to tell a story to edit video, right? Unlike photo, which pretty much anyone can go in and learn to crop and maybe change the color or apply a filter, video, you need to be able to grasp beginning, middle, and end. Um, if you can't tell a knock-knock joke, you're probably not going to be able to edit video, right? There's this element of time that you need to understand. And um, we address that in a couple really easy ways. One, yes, we do have this very powerful multi-track editing environment in which you can put an introduction in, put in your different sequences, and then uh, put a finale on it and add audio and voiceover and music. So if you want to go and try and make Citizen Kane or pick your movie, you can do that, right? But if you're just getting into video, we also 
make it easier for you to do that by providing a storyboard mode, first of all. So if you see the image on screen right now, that's a multi-track environment. We also provide a storyboard mode. We can just put one panel representing the first, element of the first segment of video, and then a second panel representing the second part. That's a lot easier for newbies to use. And I can tell you, that's been on Video Studio for a little while now. But in the new Video Studio Pro X7, which just came out last month, we've introduced it an even easier way to work with video. And that's a new module called FastFlick. And this is included when you get Video Studio, which is really great. FastFlick is a templated movie maker. Basically, you can go in and um, choose a template, drag, select the videos or photos you want to put in as part of your slideshow or your video, and then output. It's three steps, really easy. And you can get students going very quickly on this. So for example, I have a 10-year-old at home who needs to do projects for school. FastFlick is dead easy for him. Yes, he had, because of his dad, he has figured out how to use Video Studio. But FastFlick is a really easy way for newbies to get in there and start working with video. Once you've figured out how to go, put your beginning, middle, and end together, we've got all kinds of really great effects and, uh, and features that allow you to be creative with your video. So for example, you can uh, put on titles and make uh, some really compelling title sequences. You can put on overlay graphics, the lower third graphics. So if you're trying to show students how broadcasters or news organizations make their programming on TV, you can do all that in Video Studio. Very nice story here between PaintShop Pro and Video Studio is that you're able to create on-screen graphics in PaintShop Pro and then export them and bring them into Video Studio. So there's a really nice uh, partnership between those products here as well. Where things get really interesting is all the things I've described for you so far, you know what? You can find that in a lot of video editing software. I'm not sure if it's going to be as tight or as easy as, as it is in Video Studio, but sure, it's out there. The cool thing is when you get past this basic level of video editing uh, and start seeing some of the amazing things possible that are only here in Video Studio. One of those things is motion tracking. So imagine, if you will, a, a video where maybe you've got a skier on screen, and uh, maybe it's the, uh, you know, it, you, you might have that skier going down the hill, and you're watching that skier go and, uh, and disappear into the distance. With Video Studio, you're able to automatically put a tracker on that skier, put a label over them saying, maybe it says, hey, this is John, and you write John over it, and that flag with John on it will follow him all the way down the screen. That's cool for creative capabilities, but it's also cool when you're producing documentary or evidentiary video. For example, maybe you're tracking cars on a screen or a license plate on screen for policing. You can put a security mosaic over, over faces or over license plates. So again, there's lots of different use cases that are more than just making videos for, to learn how to make a video. There's also real-world business-oriented use cases, including making video blogs, this sort of thing, that you can do in Video Studio. And it's all here, and it all includes built-in learning tools as well. So with that, I'm going to take control of the screen here, and I'm not sure what kind of performance we're going to get, but I'm going to, I'm going to go for it, and I'm going to try and show you how to use some of these products. So I just, talked about, uh, I just started talking about uh, a PageShop Pro, so why don't we jump over there, and I'm going to show it to you. I'm just going to toggle back to the ReadyTalk console and make sure that I'm showing everything. I'm getting a warning saying, are you ready to share? And I'm ready. So there we go. So I'm not sure if you can see this on screen, and we're just going to monitor this on a second computer to see if, uh, if you can see the interface. But this is Corel PaintShop Pro X6. This is the product I just started off talking about as being this really comprehensive photo editor. I have a number of photos here that I took on a recent uh, trip down to sunny Florida. We're up here in Ottawa, Canada, where it's still very cold, about minus 10 Celsius, so I definitely needed this trip away. And while I was on the road, I was able to take some, some photos with my, again, my older Nikon camera and, uh, and put them in a library that I'm happy to share with you today. So the first step that I'm showing you right now is called, as you can see at the top of the screen, we have a Manage, Adjust, and Edit tabs. Okay? So in the Manage tab, this is really where you can see all your uh, photos. If you wanted to go through and delete the ones that were no good, you, know, that, that you can do that here. Uh, as you can see, if I go on, over under the File menu, um, I can open Recent Files. 
Um, I can create new libraries and so forth. So this is where things start. But once I'm in here, I, can, I have the option of scrolling through all my photos. And again, right now, I'm seeing these in a thumbnail mode. right? Like I can also toggle over and, um, and see one photo at, at a time. There we go. Very nice. And, uh, and that's, so that's, that's my photo here. And as you can see, all my thumbnails are now on the bottom of the screen. So really nice, elegant uh, inter interface that shows me all my photos. Here's an, uh, a tortoise on the lovely island of North Captiva. Uh, and over here, here's something that's really interesting. If you're working with your students and you're teaching them basic photography and you want to show, talk to them about exposure and resolution, file sizes, and so forth, you can really easily use this info panel to do that. As you can see, we support EXIF and IPTC data here. These are two different standards that are used to encode information about your images. I'm looking at the right-hand screen right now. And, um, and as you can see, it has the name of my camera. It tells me a few things. One, it tells me that I'm using um, uh, a more general metering mode, that I'm using auto white balance, and that I'm actually shooting in RAW. So, Typically, most of the time I shoot JPEG because I'm not that gearhead that I was just talking about. But RAW is so powerful, and I definitely wanted to have RAW images that I could show you in demos like this. I, um, I, I used the, uh, the RAW format, NEF, that comes with Nikon to capture these images. And as you can see, I can see the file size is much larger as I go down here. I think you can see, yeah, you can see my cursor here. So I've got the file name, the size of the file, the date that was taken, you know, bit depth resolution. This is all really useful information when we're helping our students understand um, how to, you know, how to shoot good photos. You can see the exposure time, and of course the f the f, f stop and ISO speed. So this is the EXIF data, very useful. Okay, and I can go through and tag and rate this. That's going to help me find my images. So that's that's the manage mode. Our second step is the adjust tab. And this is where things get really interesting. And to be honest, I think the Adjust tab is going to be a lot more familiar to many of our students today um, than maybe a few years ago. Because we're used to using Instagram, right? We're used to putting on filters like, uh, I'm just going to put on this, this black and white filter, and it says BD Blue Filter 2. And that, that really just means that it's got a tinge of blue to it. So our students today, they know very well about how to apply a filter thanks to in Instagram and all the other different um, apps out there. Um, but this is a really a nice easy adjust mode that I can go in and yes, I can apply a filters. I do my, most of my work over here on the left hand side of the screen. You can see that in the left hand side I have a, a histogram that I'm able to get a sense of how the lighting is and uh, my exposure. If I want to change the brightness or shadows or saturation, easy to do that. You know, like a lot of other applications, I have a nice uh, quick fix mode. We just say suggest settings, and I'm going to say suggest settings. As you can see, it's changed the contrast a little bit to darken that up. I can keep that if I want and output it, or I can just go and easily undo it, which I just did. Um, you know, but after that easy smart photo fix mode that I was just showing you, I also have a number of other controls here. Fill light, I can control that. High pass sharpening and digital noise removal. Now, not a lot of noise in this image. Again, this camera is getting pretty old. So it, it can be a little bit noisy at lo, in low light, but um, I really like what I've got with this image here. So I'm happy with it. So I'm just going to leave that image as it is. So that's the adjust mode. The idea here being, again, some really easy adjustments. And you know what? You're going to see a similar metaphor when we get over to Aftershot, so I won't dwell on this too long. Our third step here is where things get serious. Okay? So if you're students, I'm not, no, let's not say that. I'm just going to move on. <laughs> okay, so let's go to the edit step. The edit step is where things get really serious in terms of creativity. Okay, so as you can see here, um, I'm working with RAW, so it's, it, the camera RAW lab automatically opens and says, hey, we want you to get this photo just right before you go in and, and start editing it. I'm not going to work with this photo right now. I'm just going to start a new, uh, a new canvas, so I'll just cancel that. So this is it. This is the edit mode. Traditionally, if you use PaintShop Pro or Photoshop, this is kind of the mode you're used to using. And that's because it's easy. For, this is the place where we go in and start creating. So I'm going to start a new image. I've got a number of different options here. 
if I just wanted to make a square image at 300 by 300, say if I wanted to make a photo collage, for example, you know, I would just choose this. I can choose the resolution here, and I can say whether I'm going to be working primarily with a raster, so that would be you know, bitmaps like photos, or a vector if I'm going to be painting. I'm just going to accept these options. Oh, let's go see if I can grab a new preset. Actually, you know what? Let's do, it. Let's do a 16.9 screen size canvas just for fun. So there we go. That's 4 by 3, but that's okay. So here we go. So here's my canvas, and right now this checkerboard needs, means that there's nothing on it, right? So if I wanted to edit a photo here, um, I can do that in a few ways. One, I can go in and say open, and I can you know, go back to my, uh, to my folder where these photos are stored. Second, I can go into edit, and maybe if I had cut and pasted something from another image, I could get images from there, right? Um, or I could, um, I could go over here. So this is the Learning Center. Now, if you're already familiar with photography, you're not going to need this, okay? Um, I'm looking at the right-hand panel right now. If you're familiar with, with photography, you're going to be very happy working with these pull-downs and so forth. But me, let's say that I'm a newbie and I need help. You know what? If I'm a teacher I'm not, or a professor, I'm not going to want to spend a ton of time showing my students how to do the basics, especially if I have to do it again and again, which typically I do with students who are just coming in, using it once per week, and then forgetting about it until next time, right? So this Learning Center is super handy because I can go in and say, get photos, and it's not going to give me some help, uh, like from the help file, but telling me how to work with the photos. I can actually go and say, oh, okay, it's going to give me a step-by-step -step narrative about how to get photos. Oh, so now it's telling me to use the navigation palette. There's a navigation palette just so popped over over here, and I'm going to click JPEG, and I can say, when a folder is selected in the navigation palette, you can view its contents in the organizer palette. So I'm then going to go look at the organizer palette. So again, really easy way to bring your photos in, and, and then you can start working with them. Um, the next thing I can do, of course, is uh, if I didn't want to go back and use photos, I can actually, it, I actually have help here about how to use layers. So look at this. In the materials panel here, I have a number of different options. One, I can uh, work with materials if I wanted to start a new canvas. Um, I could do that and, and work with it here. Or I can apply layers. So when you're working with layers, that really means it's like having, uh, if you've used Photoshop or PaintShop Pro before, uh, you may be familiar with the idea of layers. Layers is really like taking multiple objects and putting them on top of each other. So think about acetate paper. You might have a, a photo behind it, and then you draw something on that acetate and lay it over top. Or you might have cutouts and put other things on top. So for example, I can, uh, I can bring in this, my friend the uh, turtle again here, tortoise, sorry. And uh, if I bring him in, I can um, oops, go in and edit it and then lay other objects on top. And that will allow me to, uh, to, to do all kinds of creative things with, uh, with my tortoise friend here. So, okay, so it's 12, or sorry, 1214 Eastern Time, so I'm not going to spend too much more time on, on PaintShop Pro. But as you can see, uh, pretty powerful product. And again, you can apply all kinds of filters, and, uh, and you can do a lot of drawing and cropping and so forth. Basically, anything you want to do with uh, photo, you can do it here in PaintShop Pro. So let's jump out of PaintShop Pro for a second and jump over and show you some more of Aftershot. Aftershot, here we go. Look at that. It looks kind of familiar, doesn't it? It looks kind of like that adjustment mode in PaintShop Pro. And uh, this is really a, a new metaphor for photography. And we think of this as photo adjustment. So you can really think about photo today in, in two ways. There's photo editing, and this is what we typically thought of in the past with PaintShop Pro and Photoshop. We are actually going in, you've got one photo, you're going to make some edits, you're going to save those edits, and then you're going to get out, right? But a few years ago, this whole new class of products came out. Uh, one, you know, one of the first ones was, was called Bibble, and Bibble is actually the product that we acquired here at Corel and turned into, uh, into Aftershot. Um, another product in the photo adjustment space is Lightroom. So you may be familiar with Adobe Lightroom. Right? These are very much, and Adobe Aperture is another good example. These are all very much in the same family in that they're designed from the ground up to deal with photos, uh, they call it photo workflow, right? Getting your photos in, managing a vast number of photos, and then making quick edits, and then getting those photos out, right? Because we don't want to linger a long time. When we come back from a photo shoot, I don't want to spend forever importing my photos and do PaintShop Pro or Photoshop, and then adjusting them individually, and then getting them, exporting them. 
the beauty of something like Aftershot is that you're able to bring a whole bunch of photos in as a batch. You can automate. Um, maybe you're going to convert them all to black and white. You can automate that and quickly get them out no matter how large those files are. So you can bring them in as an NEF file. These are raw files as you can see here. Um, and I can bring in 100 of these if I wanted and automatically set up uh, Aftershot Pro to uh, maybe apply the same black and white filter and then all render them out to a low res JPEG for my client to look at. So very professional um, workflow is possible here. But even if you're not doing huge batches of photos, and again, that's the, this product's strength, amazing. This is an amazing product for um, photo adjustment. Let me show you a little bit of it. So here, um, again, similar approach. Um, if you look from uh, left to right, we've got um, our catalogs. Okay, so this is where we get photos in, and it's got a tabbed interface. So I can find my photos via um, a, a catalog. So I can go and map um, my uh, – I can create – I can get different folders and add photos from different folders into one catalog. Pretty cool, right? So if, I'm out on, uh, if I shoot beach photos on six different days in six different folders, I can make them all appear in one Aftershot Pro catalog, which is nice. Or you can do what I do. I am married to my file system. I've used Windows for a very long time. So I just I save my photos and you know, March 1st is one folder and then March 9th is another photo. So that's how I save my photos. So I'm very happy working with that. The other tab here is the output tab. And all, all I have to do to move photos to a, a, any number of output options is to drag them over here or use a shortcut key to output them very fast. So as you can see, here are some more shots from my, uh, my trip to, uh, to sun, the sunny south. As you can see here, really easy interface. I can say, hey, that's a five-star photo for sure. Actually, no, it's not. It's got a blip on it. I'm going to put four stars. Easy for me to tag and rate that. I can go in and make adjustments in here. And the cool thing is, is there is a whole world of photo adjustments to work with here. See this? Going down the side, I can add all these things. But the other cool thing is that we have got an open photo editing SDK that people can build their own solutions for, for PaintShop. So if you've got a uh, computer science program in your, in your institution, if you've got a photography uh, uh, program in your institution, and people are getting into doing their own coding, you can work with Aftershop Pro's raw library to make that happen. That's all possible as part of our offering. So pretty exciting stuff. I'm getting a flag here, even though I wanted to go and do some simple adjustments like cropping or straightening, as you can see down at the bottom here, I'm getting a flag here that I need to move on to the next thing. So uh, again, a ton of different options here on how to organize, catalog, and edit your photos. Um, but we'll have to look at that at another time. Last thing I wanted to show you here today, Video Studio Pro. I talked about this before, but look at this. Capture, edit, share, three steps. One, two, three, approach to video editing. I'm going to show you how easy it is to make a video. I'm going to start down here at our Instant Projects library. So the first thing I do is click here. I'm going to get a look at a wide variety of templates. All I have to do really is uh, drag a template down into the bottom of my screen. So I'm going to drag this one. It's got some motion graphics in it and stuff. Then I can go and add content to it. So for example, if I was doing a digital storytelling project, I might get some of this video. I'm going to, because it's so snowy here, I'm going to go with this nice shot of a canoe. I can go and drag it down here into the timeline. Now, I'm going to drag this one behind the body of my video, and I'm going to go and get a photo. Let's go get a photo over here. I need some JPEGs. There we go. And um, some more palm trees here. Import that in my library. If I wanted to see just photos here, I can toggle the interface here and just see photos or videos. And that's a raw file. There we go. And uh, I'm going to drag that down here and replace it, see if it works. Oops, I missed. So I can easily just drag and control click, and boom, it replaces that image. And uh, now, look at that. It's part of the template. So this template is now mine. I, uh, I've got the look that I wanted. And if I want to go in now and put in some, uh, some, uh, a picture-in-picture -picture effect like I have here, I can drag this on the main video track if I want to uh, make that a full screen video. There we go. Just like that, and I can go output that now. So very easy. As you can see here, I've got both a title on the screen that is editable. There we go. So just double click this. And I can put my own music here. This is, uh, you know, 
I might want to put on a nice uh, woodland themed uh, soundtrack, for example, instead of the sort of spacey sound I have here now. All easy to do that, and I can, your students can leverage their own libraries of music and so forth. Or they can go in and use stock music. We even have an auto music library here called Smart Sound that we're able to use. So that's, that's handy. I want to show you one more thing because I'm, like I'm out of time. And that is some of the different easy ways to work with, uh, to work with video. Uh, I'm just going to cancel this. I don't need that anymore. Update later, thank you. Okay, there we go. So, and this is the timeline and storyboard view. This is the timeline, full multi-track environment. We support 21 tracks, so I can go in here and adjust as many tracks as I want, right? Or I can go into this timeline view and just have tiles. And that's really easy if I want to draw, drag one tile in after another. Um, another easy way to composite is to use our new Fast Flick. So I'll open that in the background. I'm going to show that to you in a second. One last, uh, the penultimate thing I want to show you though is this Record Capture Option tab. See on this interface here, it says it's, got this, it's got the reel and the red button for record. Um, you've got all kinds of options here. You can do stop motion photography, screen capture, voiceover, and everything. Screen capture is huge, right? If you want to do demos, if you, want, if you as, a, as a teacher want to record what's happening on the screen, um, you know, like you might want to do in Camtasia or some other screen recording applications, it's all possible here. It's all possible as part of Video Studio. But unlike those other applications, you've got screen capture plus a complete screen um, editing environment in one. So if I had time, I'd show you more of that. But this is Fast Flick. So um, this is great because it's, it's touch enabled. It's uh, got great templates. You can design your own templates if you want. And it's as easy, easy as selecting a template. So I'm going to grab this one. It looks like it has Mark Zuckerberg in it, but it doesn't. Trust me. I don't know him. So um, Azure Media will go in here and I can go and grab some photos. There we go, or video. There we go. Got some GoPro ski videos. Got some photos of some ugly guy on a camping trip. And then, uh, and boom, I play it and it comes up automatically with music and everything. So I can edit these and, uh, and put titles on and everything. So it's really easy to get in with video. So with that, that was a quick dance through the three applications I wanted to show you today. And uh, Nathan, I'm going to give you back control so we can go back to that last slide and answer any questions that are out there. But uh, the really cool thing about these applications is that again, you can not only get uh, free training uh, for these online, you can also uh, download these for free and try them out on our free trial website. So with that, Brian, I, why don't I pass things over to you? I used up all of our time um, to finish things up. Sure. Um, thanks again, Greg. Uh, uh, awesome walk through the products. Uh, thanks everybody for attending. Uh, Nathan, Mary, I'm not sure if, uh, if there are any questions or maybe we can uh, you know, open it up uh, for questions at this time. Please use the, the chat feature if you uh, have uh, uh, questions. Uh, if not, there's uh, contact information for Matt and for Corel that you can send questions to at a later time. We also want to uh, remind everyone that on April 1st, we will be featuring Corel Draw uh, at 10.30 a.m. and at 1 p.m. in the afternoon. So we do have one question. Uh, any timeline for all products uh, be available for native Mac? Great question. So we get that question all the time. And um, so primarily our pedigree has been on Windows, right? So that's, that's where we're coming from. And we do get that inquiry uh, with some regularity. So right now, just to reiterate, you may have already heard this, Chad, the, uh, the, the one native product we have today is Aftershock Pro. Great product for, for, for the Mac. The other products are Windows only at this time. And uh, right now we continue to evaluate Mac. We don't have a timeline for that. However, we have done testing on Boot Camp and, uh, and Parallels. Uh, Parallels, VMware, and they work extremely well um, without any lag or anything, so that's pretty cool. Um, and we're also looking at uh, and in some new virtualization options as well, which I think that, that is probably the most exciting thing that we've got on the portfolio. But um, I don't have anything on the immediate horizon, Chad, for uh, Video Studio or Paint Shop on the Mac. The next question I see here is, 
Uh, will this be archived somewhere? And yes, Nathan, there will be a recording of this, right? Yes, we are making this available online. This is Mary Robertson, Director of Communications. We will send out the slides, and we will also make the slides available online with audio um, at a later date. Hopefully, we'll get it out yet today. But we'll and, send uh, a link to that for our website. Mary, if I may add, if you visit any of Corel's YouTube properties or uh, our web pages today, um, you will. If anyone's interested in seeing more demo. That is, there's lots of demo and how-to videos available either at learn.corel.com or on those properties I just mentioned as well. Uh, great. Yes, thank you for uh, a great overview of uh, the Corel products today. And uh, uh, to everyone at Corel, we appreciate uh, um, your participation today and uh, having this offering available to our uh, stakeholders. Thank you very much. Thanks so much, Nathan. Thanks to, uh, to everyone who attended. Thank you, and have a great day.